here's one question I've got. You know how when you um, you hear a projectile it bounces off these items, but when you hit a cube, it gets absorbed. I'd like the dragon to absorb projectiles. Okay. So, um, right now, if you open the projectile, uh, you'll see that on hit, it's checking to see um, if the thing has physics turned on, and if it does, then we're going to destroy the actor, and if not, we don't do anything. Okay, so I'm in the projectile right here. Yep. And then, so you can see it's checking, is simulating physics for whatever it was we hit. Um, and then if it is, you're adding impulse, and that's why it's moving the block, and then we're destroying the actor, which is why it looks like it's being absorbed. Um, if you want it to um, destroy when it hits the dragons, we can do this a couple of ways. Okay. We can do it um, with a tag, where you can actually like specify, like, hey, this is a dragon. Um, sure. Although you, you have to, like... Like that gets really tedious if you're doing oh, okay. more than like you know like if, if you're gonna have like this just be a thing that attacks all this like all the enemies in the level, then yep. that's not how you want to do it. If it's it was something like okay. specific, then we would use a tag. Um, if you wanted to just damage other pawns in the level, just other things that are you know have controllers and move around, we can just check to see if the other thing we hit is a pawn. So on okay. the left hand side here, uh, on the event hit. Um, the blue pin that says other is the uh, actor reference for the other actor we hit. You can just pull okay. off of there and uh, cast a pawn. Um, and then like this will cause the pawn class to be loaded, but because you have a character, that's loaded anyway, so we don't actually care. Um, okay. And then, so you can go ahead and throw this up here. Yep. Perfect. And then if the cast fails, uh, you'll actually oh, go yeah. to the branch because... It was not a pawn, and maybe we, you know, maybe we want to add an impulse, but we definitely, you know, okay. and destroy it still, but we're definitely not gonna. Um, so pull off the as pawn for me, and then um, we're going to uh come up a little bit just in so we have some space, yeah, just up, like in in it, yeah, uh, yeah, and then um, go ahead and let go and type in apply damage. And then this is how you should actually be passing damage uh, along. Um, as long as it's a non-zero number, it'll go through. So you can use positive numbers to actually hurt the enemy and then negative numbers to heal things. Um, okay. And then uh, we basically just want to go into destroy actor. So you can plug the white pin into the one you have, or you can just call destroy actor again. Uh, that's more of like a visual aesthetic thing for you. All right. Now, um, if it says damage zero, apply damage will not actually trigger. So right now, it's going to just ignore that apply damage node. Um, we haven't set that up in any way, so that's probably for the best right now because you, you you have it doing damage some other way at the moment. Okay. At least, like, at least I think you do because they're they're reacting to being shot. Yeah. They're. Um... Oh yeah, that's cool. So they're bouncing and now they absorb. Um. How how does it? How does it know this is a pawn? So, um, the like, so I'm a. It's the uh, C plus plus or like you know, like the 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 class hierarchy. Uh, yeah. It has to be like it absolutely must be a child of an actor class to be in the level. So I know for sure whatever I hit is at least an actor. When we cast a pawn, it's we're doing a type cast. So I'm literally taking the actor reference and trying to change it. Or you know, trying to cast it to a pawn type reference. If it okay. is a pawn, so like if this thing does inherit from the pawn class, then it will change that, and you know, we can then go ahead with our with our thing. What is what is this object called if it's not a pawn here? This wall, this static mesh. Uh, so this static mesh is just an actor because so the, okay. the way it works. So the way it works in Unreal is um, actor classes are, like you know, anything that inherits from the actor class directly, um, and they don't have controllers. So, like, pretty much anything that goes okay. in the level that is not controlled by an AI controller or by a player controller is going to be a, is just going to be an actor. Um, pawns and characters both uh, 
are possessed by pawns and you know either an ai one or a player controller one and then receive input uh either from a behavior tree or from you know hardware and a person actually hitting buttons okay, but like thanks. Uh, sorry about that. no you're good so like, if you hit control e real quick um because you have the guy you have this dragon guy selected in the level you'll see in the upper right hand corner it says parent classes character yeah and then character it's... inherits from pawn and pawn inherits from actor so okay because this is at least a pawn that the cast works that's cool uh wait for that's actually sweet um looks great cool yeah. uh thank you so let's um See what we well, can do. You get well, this so thing actually, right. do me a favor. Go, go back to where you were a second ago. Uh, yeah. So in here, yeah. um, do me a favor and go ahead and get rid of this uh, hit and that cast real quick, and go ahead and right click somewhere, and just type in um, event any damage. Now this is the one that'll get called when apply damage is called. So it'll pass through the damage uh, value, so you can uh, you know adjust it on the on the health and decide like okay should this dude die or not yet um and then you know th like this is where you'll yeah. handle the damage basically um, um the reason th tell me right? if i did the other tell me if i did this right i want to show you what i was doing here this um i i did it this way because if you hit the dragon with your with your collider it, it we just want to be able to hit it with a projectile so is this the right way to do it like, so you can't just hit it with your body? Well, so um, th th the way I just showed you is the, like the quote unquote right way to do it, because right, okay. that like that way you can uh, take damage from anything you decide to take damage from. So oh, yeah. like, you, you, like you have to actually call the apply damage function to get this to fire. And then, yeah, you know, like that passes through a specific amount of data. Like what you just did works. But it's very, very limited in the way that if I decide I want to have like, you know, the player, you know, have a melee attack or I want to have a different, you know, like I want to have like hazards in the level or something. The way you just did it is not going to work for that because I'm checking specifically for this one class type. Whereas here, this is just a damage system and I can have, you know, a, you know, like if, it, if this guy walks through fire on the ground, I can have that burn him. And if I punch him in the face, I can have that hurt him. Or if I shoot him with something, I can have that hurt. Him. I mean, like I can damage you really any way I want and it will always do the damage sound and, you know, handle all the, um, you know, like all the damage math and things like that. I guess there's a delay here, isn't there? Yeah, that's where it's coming from. Yeah, so like ever so slightly, and you, you can actually see it on the picture here where it's like yeah, crazy skinny, it, yeah. and then it sort of like you know flares out. But yeah, yeah. So I'm a, if you want to adjust it, you just have to crop it slightly, or uh, if you click this little sound 2D button. Thank you. Nice. So, All right, uh, so start time, you can just go ahead and put in like 0 0.01 or 0 0.005. When we go to try and take control of this dude. We're going yeah. to actually like possess him. This is the one we're going to set up in here, just because this is the only thing we'll have as persistent. Um, like, because we're going to switch between the pawns. So if we program the switching inside the pawn, uh, we'll have to do it in two different places, and that's not really what we want to do. Okay. So first things first, we're going to need to actually add um, an action for this so that we can do it. Uh, Go ahead and shrink you for two seconds. So first we'll go to inputs, uh, we'll go to actions. Go ahead to inputs, action. And this is gonna be, uh, what, mount? Or actually, you do it the other way around. And then this is just going to be a button press, so we don't actually have to do anything in here. Uh, next, we're going to come back out here, and we're going to switch this over to our defaults. And uh, the dragon's going to be able to do everything that the, the pawn can do, right? Or that the uh, first person guy can do? 
Hello. All right. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. So like, I'm just double checking. Like, is the the dragon gonna be able to do yeah. all the same stuff? Okay. Yes. So we'll we'll just go ahead and use this one then. Um, and mount. Very nice. And then, uh, what button do you want to use for mount? Uh, E. Okay. And then we'll just save this, and that's pretty much that. What what is the what what is the best button? Would it be X or something, or to mount this guy? Oh, I mean, it it, it really just depends on like the game and how often you're going to be doing that e is usually okay. like the interact button um so it's you know like we we could we could easily enough change that so that it says interact instead of mount and then we can just have it do whatever you're you know looking at okay. um but yeah it's uh so now that we have that part we're going to um So there. Yeah, I'm just I'm oh, trying okay. to decide. So, you so yeah, so your dude's gonna be on the dragon. So, I'm thinking we're gonna go ahead and just move the stuff in here. That way we don't have to worry about uh, going back and forth. So I'm gonna go to the blueprints. I'm gonna go to your first person character, and this stuff is done in here. Um in case you want to have different movements and things because these are all going to do the same stuff um the only one i uh, the, the, the the dragon's a character too right uh is that yeah i mean i okay what what, okay, yeah. what would you think i mean like i'm a, i'm i'm pretty sure we just checked it and it said it said dragon i was just double checking if you remembered or not okay uh so I'm going to go ahead and copy all of this stuff and I'm going to just put this in the controller because the controller is going to actually know what's up. Um, go ahead and bring you down. What is... Oh. All righty. And then uh, we get uh, so I'm going to get controlled pawn and this is going to be my target for everything that said self before. Um, um and then this one I'm gonna have to actually cast because it's looking for a character, and this is giving me a pawn, so I'm gonna have to. Cast a character. Now, um, this is not generally something you should do, uh, but we can change this. Where is... Yeah. So if I right-click on this and uh, to convert to pure cast, cool. it'll take away the execution lines so that I can just assume this is going to work and I don't need to put it on the thing and actually do the check. Um only reason I'm going to do this is because I know for sure that we're going to be controlling character classes. Um, and then this will actually make them do everything we want to do. All right, good stuff. We got a sprint key. I think that's built in, right? We just drop, drop one in. Oh, uh, so sp sprint is not built in, but it's very easy to add. Do you oh, want is to have that one? a walk speed? Like it's a walk speed, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. basically you, you uh, get a hold of the... Over here. 
get a hold of the uh, character movement components. Jeez, you're annoying. Eh, all right, whatever. We'll just do it this way. Hmm. How are you I don't remember. Yeah, hold on. And then you just set max walk speed to whatever you want it to be. So if we're sprinting, we'll set it to something higher. And if we're, you know, when we stop sprinting, we'll set it to something lower. Um, um hey, is, is yep. that step up command? Like, say you, it, like this mesh, like a character mesh, it's kind of can you step up on it. What yeah, does so that help anything? That uh, basically just lets you know, I mean, for, for what we're doing, no, that's not going to be helpful. Okay. Um, what that's for is to determine, like, is your character allowed to walk on this thing or should we kick them off? And then same thing with uh, AI. It'll determine, like, should, you know, should the nav mesh consider this a thing the AI can walk on? Um, so it, it's just a setting, that, you know, for quality of life to make it a little easier to be like, mm -hmm. no, nobody walks on this. Um, there's also one for like allowing your character to walk off of ledges. So, uh, in the character moving component, you can just turn that off and then you can't, you know, you have to actually jump off ledges. You can't just walk off. Uh, okay. but yeah, like all that sort of stuff set in. Um, and then just real quick, we'll go ahead and add our, um, Spring. action for sprinting. Yeah. yeah so, same thing. I've Input. done this before. What? I've done it before. But not with the new enhanced template. Yeah, so I mean, um, it's gonna be the same as everything else. Basically, it's a it's a single button hit, so we don't actually need to change anything here. And then, um, we're gonna end up just going into our default and adding that mapping, saying that we can sprint. Uh, what do you want this to be? Um, shift, tab, control, Ooh. space bar. Yeah, sorry. What there. What's that? I, I oh, already hit the okay. shift. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, and then back over here. Let me just go ahead and do our sprint real quick. And... So, uh, is, is this a toggle or a hold? Uh, just hold it, not a toggle. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and pull this stuff. So this works for the player and the dragon. Uh, it's, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, uh, all this is going to work for the player and the dragon now because we moved it over here into the controller, which is uh, going to take yeah. possession of both of them. So. Alrighty. Um so set the walk oh. speed. Uh maybe I don't know what the yeah, default yeah. was. Uh if I'm it's probably five hundred, but I'll double check oh, just yeah. for fun. Uh, six hundred actually. Okay. Okay. They they they, they change back and forth. Um so this one we're gonna set back to six hundred and uh what do you want to do? How fast are we going when you're sprinting? You want to double it? Let's double it here. All right. So, um, this one I'll have to test because in order to do completed, I might have to uh, set it up so that like it's like it's supposed to be held because right now it might just trigger canceled immediately. But I have I'm not 100 percent on that. Um, or completed. Um. But yeah, so the next thing we're going to do here is we want to actually set up our uh, mount button, which is going to be 
I A underscore out and all right. So <clears throat> we're going to make a variable here and this is going to be our uh, first person ref. So this is going to hold the reference to our first person uh, pawn. That way we are characters so we can switch back and do what we need to do with that. Um, and we'll go ahead and make this Uh, just a character reference, because I don't think I actually care beyond that. And we want object reference, because this is going to point to an actual character in the level. Alrighty, and then... Mount ref. Actually, I'm trying to decide if I even need that. I don't think I do. I don't think I do, actually. We're going to get rid of that. Oh, hey, there we go. All righty. <clears throat> so, first thing I want to do is come back up here to the top. And we'll do this at begin play. And then... On event possess, possessed pawn. I'm going to go ahead and set this to that, but only the first time. Again, I already know this is going to work, so I don't need to do that. Check. Um, and. Get this. And uh, I can actually check to see if this has been set yet. So we're going to convert this to validated yet. And. This will go here. And if this is null. Which means, if, like, if it has not been set yet, then we'll do this and um, we'll actually set the reference. If it has been set, then I'm gonna just not do anything because my new possessed pawn reference. Okie dokie. So basically, what's this is just gonna save the the uh, the first person reference the first time, and then if it's already been set, we're not gonna mess with that, so that we have it to go back to. Clear. So uh, there we go. Now we're moving. <laughs> there we. Go. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Cool. So um. So we're going to uh, first check a thing. So we're going to get this and we're going to get controlled pawn. And we're going to check to see if these are the same thing. Hmm. And then, because, you know, like if, if we hit mount and they are the same thing, then I want to actually try to get on something. If I hit mount and they are not the same thing, then I want to get off the thing that I'm on. Um, make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, do this here, we'll do a branch. And then, <clears throat> so, if this Assuming that they're not the same thing, we'll start there. Um, I want to 
get my first person reference. I want to get my controlled pawn again. And then I want to unpossess. Hold on. Not you, the other one. Unpossess you. What is... Oh, so I don't, okay, I, I just tell it, I don't, I'm a, so it doesn't take in a, a reference of who to unpossess, it's just we unpossess. Okay. Um, and then, so, as far as we unpossess, and then possess, and then this one takes the reference of who I want to possess. Aha. All right, so that should take care of that part. Um, almost. Uh, I also want to, because we're going to attach so that we can, like, so we come along. Uh, I'm assuming you want to do that, right? Uh, me and the. FPS character to follow, uh, sit on the dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like, I mean, you, oh you, yeah, you I know. Wanted him to like, to, you know, like warg into him or something, but yeah. So if we're gonna actually ride him, ride him, then we want uh, the guy to come along. Yeah, not like a remote control. Yeah, sit on the dragon. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to. Uh, detach from actor. And this over there a little bit. Pop this up here. And then we'll go ahead and just keep world for now. And then this should be sufficient for getting off. So now we want to get on. Um, and in order to get on, we have to identify who we would like to get on. So we need to do a trace. So we're going to do a sphere trace by channel. And this will let us define basically like a capsule shape to, uh, check inside of and see what we hit. Um, we're going to... Actually, let me go ahead and um, thinking I want to just switch this because uh, we actually do need. Uh, to know where the camera is, so I'll just go ahead and change that now. Uh, you know who I want to go to. All right. uh, beep, we go there. Okay. And then change you to, again, first person. Character, yes. Yes, change the type. Yep. All two of them, come on. Okie dokie. <clears throat> so, we want to go ahead and... Uh, 
first person camera. World location. Get forward vector. Start here. To add these. After I multiply this by an amount, we'll go 300 for now, just for fun. Plug you there, and then it's going to be the output. We'll say radius of 25, and we'll set this to for duration right now, so we can double check it. And five seconds is fine. Um, assuming that we hit something, so we'll split this open. Eh, hold on. Wait. So the other way you can do this, which is ends up being a little cleaner sometimes, uh, is break. Okay. And then I can uh, pop this open, use the ones I want, so I can get my branch. Uh, I can check if the other hit actor was. Um, are you are you only going to mount dragons? Yes. Okay. So we'll cast to dragon. You can. Yep. And then. So I hit this little arrow at the bottom now, and it just shows the one, you know, these top two and then whatever ones I had connected. So it sort of saves me a little space. Um, and then if we cast the dragon and it was successful, then we want to uh, get controller, unpossess. No, what? I don't want you. I want you. Mm. Um, and then I want to attach my dude. Um, so actually, uh, so uh, like because like now now because he's possessed, I can actually just use my get controlled pawn again and I can uh, attach actor to actor and you're going to be the parent actually and you're going to be the one we attach We're gonna snap to target. Snap to target. Keep world because I don't want to actually change any of that. And then uh, we like I'm a we'll, we'll add a socket name to the dragon so that when you attach, we can tell like, hey, I want you to attach here specifically. Um, yeah. Now, this part, um, we, we're going to have to test because I want to make sure that the, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, so th 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 this should work. So, detaches, uh, okay, yeah, so this this will be fine. All right. Um, all right, so, yeah, we just need to get the actor, or we just need to get the socket name, and then we can test this all out. Um, yeah. Well, we need to get the socket name, and we need to add a camera to the dragon so that we can... Yeah do our thing um 
the um first things first uh let me find the dragon real quick let's go to content there we go Here we go. So uh, this is the one we're using, right? Yeah. All right, cool. So uh, we want to add a socket for our dude to attach to. So over here in the skeleton tree, we're going to pick a spot, um, probably either chest or neck, just because it's probably okay. about where we want to be. Um, we'll go with chest and right click, add socket, chest socket. And we'll go ahead and rename this to mount point and so first we want to rotate this because right now uh our dude's gonna be kind of like tilted um so we want to 90 degrees that way so now we can see up is up, uh, X is forward, and green is right. So that's correct. And then we're going to pull this up a little bit so that the center... So this is where the center of our dude's going to go, because that's, uh, like, the, the center of his capsule is going to be here. All right. Um, so we're going to throw him right there. Um, can you attach it to a bone? Like, if you, if you didn't know about mount point, could you just... I mean, if you didn't know about a socket, could you just attach it to a bone? Um, not directly, no, okay. because, uh, the, the, the attach, uh, function is looking for a socket. It's not okay. looking for a bone. Um, and the, the reason for that is because you will want to adjust and rotate and like mess with them. And you can't do that with a bone. Okay. I mean, like you could, but you'll, you'll mess up the, the, you know, the character. Um, so here, do, 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 let me. See, this is lying to me. I don't want that. Uh, I want to do this. I want to do Control C, and then click off without messing with it, and then come back over here. Socket name, Control V, perfect. Um, and then uh, I'm also going to. Set actor enable collision is false. Uh, I'm just doing this because um, I don't want our like I don't want our first person character to collide with the dragon or anything else really. Um, we're you know, we're going to rely on the dragon to do the colliding for, for us from this point. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stick this on here, and I want to do this before we um, actually attach because otherwise it'll be a little bit of a problem um, there we go and then I'm gonna just copy and paste this down here and we'll go ahead and do that there all right compile and save and then let's go ahead and uh, test this out you want to do the honors okay. So uh, we just want to hop back to the level and try to take possession of one of these dragons. Yeah. Uh, cool. Let's see. Where am I? Yeah. So we're we're, we're going to add a camera to the dragon because right now he doesn't have one. But the dragon. Yep. And then do me a favor and try to uh, dismount. Let's see. I think I'm. All right. Think you're stuck? Yeah, he's stuck on there. Kind of funny, though. Okay. Yeah.
Uh, runtime is unpossessed. Okay, so he does not click that one once. Uh, uh no, no, the the uh, that's okay. I, I'm I'm pretty sure I know where it is. Uh, let me come back in. No, that's the projectile. I don't want that one. Um, is there a second? Yeah, there is. All right, cool. So, this one I do believe is coming back as none. Uh, so, we're going to do an is valid check on this. And then. Is valid, unpossess, is not valid, just go ahead and straight up possess it. Um, there we go. All righty. So now that, that part was taken care of, we need to, number one, go fix the issue with the camera. Just gonna throw one of those in here real quick. What are we doing right now? Camera. Open Sesame. Is this still open on the? Is he open on another screen? There it is. Okay, I was gonna say, like, what the hell? Yeah, um, it's just... yeah no, I got you. That's fine. Uh, so we want to go ahead and over here in the viewport. We'll go ahead and just throw a camera. Stick you right about here. File. And then class defaults. Okay, so that's already turned on. Good. Okie dokie, so that should fix that. And then... Um, right, we wanted to be able to leave the dragon. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just uh, mark another uh, another socket on this dude. And this will be the dismount point. And we'll just send them there. Um, so same thing, we'll keep we'll keep it with chest. We'll just add another socket. Dismount point. Yay. Control C, uh, and then dismount point is going to go rotate dismount point 90 like that, and then we're going to move dismount point over here, mm. just because, and. Let's rotate that. Perfect. All right, so we'll save that. Come back over here to our controller. Uh, and then...
set actor location and rotation. Mm. Very nice. All right, and then So, uh, because I don't want to, like, I don't want to actually, like, uh, cast and save another thing, I'm just going to check to see, does the controlled pawn have this component? And if it does, it'll return that component to me. So I don't actually have to care about what class my pawn is. Um, okay. We could, because I already cast to it earlier over here, but I'm not going to go back now. Um, and we want to... Uh, It's socket transform. Oh no, actually I don't give a shit about that. I want I want this one. Okay. Uh, all right, yeah, so I want world space. And then I'm gonna split this open. What's RTS? Oh, um, so RTS in this particular instance, um, relative to space. Okay. So, um, world space is where it's relative to actor component, you know, parent bone. It's just like what you're, what we're doing it relative on, and we're gonna do it relative to the world origin as opposed to okay. the origin of any of those things. Um, bum, bum. stick you there. Merry Christmas. And all righty, uh, compile and save, and go ahead and try that again real fast. Sure. Not fun. <laughs> Ryan the guy. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Let's try, I want to let's try, try the dismount. Oh yeah, look at that. Uh, it's and pretty cool. Is there a way we could uh, get him? What? Can we get him in the air? Um, the dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you'll so you'll essentially have to like I'm a I have to I have another session here in four minutes, but okay. Basically, uh, what you'll do is you'll set up another. Um. So that one will be that one will be something you set up on the dragon. Or, uh, we can do this real fast, I guess. Uh, there we go. So let me go ahead in here and um. You, you want to have? I was saying, you, you already have code to do that, don't you? To like make him move up. Or was it no. a different dragon? Well, that's just an animation sequence. Oh, so, okay, so the, the montage is the one that actually puts him in the air? No, nah, that's when he gets hit, and he, like, winces, and then the, the go in the air is just an animation. It's triggering an animation in the, the state machine. Okay. Um, so... What I would do here is I would make the cap I'd make the camera relative to the mesh. So now wherever the mesh goes, the camera will go. So if you play that animation, um you should be good. Um so like all you actually have to do is So uh, what, what what's the animation? Oh, it's just like uh, idle. It's just an idle. Okay. I, I've got a, um, 
since, since you have another session, do you want to meet at a different time? Since I don't want you to rush for your other session. Oh yeah, no, no. I mean, it, I'm, I'm always rushing for things, but um, hmm. yeah. So basically, you will just do the same thing here. Play animation and then pick your animation thing or um, play montage if it's a montage. Um, but by getting okay. a hold of the controlled pawn and then getting a hold of the skeletal mesh component, you can try to play that thing. Okay. As long as you are the dragon, it'll work. Um, okay. And then, again, you, you can check to see if you are the dragon by doing this thing here where we check the controlled pawn against the first person reference. And if it's true, then you are the dragon. I mean, my bad. If it's true, then you're not the dragon. Um, 